13 Sentinels has almost everything that I've come to expect and enjoy from my anime games. There's a whimsical sense of escapism in the time and place of the setting that is both convincing through realism and captivating through fantasy. There's an optimism and a romanticism in the character motivations and attitudes that provide an uplifting counterbalance to the eccentric melodrama. It has nail-biting suspense foreshadowed by mysterious epiphanies. The tightly paced trauma of 13 troubled teens with romantic rifts remaining paradoxical through time and space. The pride of Japan's warrior class with a top-notch soldier that can't quench the thirst for battle even after the war is over. You've got high school girls with giant robots. <laughs> And when you throw in a big titty waifu nurse that doubles as a time traveling secret agent, you've compiled all of the essential components that contribute to the obscure charm of anime that endures. As a narrative experience, it does almost everything that it does well, but it also doesn't do much as a game. At least this would be true if there wasn't a refreshing simplicity in letting the player determine the order of operations, a decision that can sometimes be coordinated and other times capricious. The visual novel component is illustrious in its storytelling devices and emotional existential themes. It's charming with its contrasting characters and their converging developments, and it's daring in the way that it leaves the sequence of events up to the way the player permutates the pacing. Visual novels and text adventures are typically straightforward and passive, requiring limited, if any, input in the way of player participation. And this principle is still largely true in 13 Sentinels, as general player choices have minimal impact on dialogue or narrative branches outside of the custom sequential continuity. However, with a story told in nonlinear parts that are unlocked through linear gameplay progression and generalized story checkpoints, the way that 13 Sentinels is paced and digested is true to the nature of what video game freedom can provide through the means of personal experience. How you decide to piece together the clues in the order that you choose or stumble upon is what makes the emergent truths more suspenseful and the 2D storybook narrative more beguiling. Although at a certain point, minor plot reveals may be more or less impactful depending on the order, because of how the context of a plot twist slightly changes a bit from one route to the next. But the best kept secrets are usually safeguarded well by the checkpoints, and the plot twists are so wild and unpredictable that each of the 13 pathways and their individual chapters within have something awesome up their sleeves. If choosing the order of how you binge watch the adventure is the variable, the real-time strategy gameplay segments are more linear focused almost automated affairs that complement the typically narrow process of consuming a novel by giving you a more open-ended approach. There is customization for the mecha and their tools, but the actual strategy component is a bit of a misnomer as victory is about as simple as spamming AOE moves as much as is possible through the brief cooldown windows and depending on your positioning, which can be important. There is some thoughtfulness here though, as each mission has bonus objectives and potential modifiers to increase the challenge by demanding higher efficiency and protecting the city and your mechanized soldier fleet. The reward for playing proficiently is the S rank, and optional story files that recap events and share details on the characters, kind of like developer notes. It's just pretty chill to leave the story progression at player discretion and have combat sold separately even if the combat is kind of just a formality to unlock the story events. But these can be done in various orders and they don't interrupt the flow so much. And if anything, they might enhance the flow. There's some mindless fun to be had here and an opportunity to switch things up for even better pacing than exist in the non-linear engagements. But I can't help but feel that at least the way that I played, which was mostly on easy mode, that this game mode is more about going on a power trip than it is about the strategy. There's no doubt that playing on hard mode would make this more intense, but the main interest never wavers from finding out more about how the story unfolds. 
It's here in mission mode that the drama continues and culminates in the convergence of all the Sentinels in a combined effort to save their world and defeat the Kaiju Menace. I like the banter between the characters here, where some of the loose threads connect together and their personalities come full circle. You could say that even the combat moves seem reminiscent of the character dispositions, for example, how Yuki-chan releases some of that pent-up aggression she carries by using her OP physical skills on the robots. Completing these missions can be a bit of a grind, but it does give you a break from straining your eyes on all the dialogue sections, and it gives you a bit of dopamine once you've unlocked a previously gated story path from this progression system. It's not the most exciting game mode, but it's not completely useless either. The most important thing is it ties together with the narrative thread of interstellar monsters and the prevailing absurdity of anime and Japanese manga depictions of Big Roboto. As much as they talk about the Sentinel's machinery in the exposition, they have to show you some as well. It's not an entirely original concept, but like the story, it is unique. Shooting off a nuke from the Sentinel and taking out dozens of bots is pretty cool, actually. As confusing and often convoluted as 13 Sentinels is as a narrative, it's a lot of fun and easily one of the most immersive stories in this medium once you get past the tutorial sections that tend to be the Achilles heel of JRPGs. The same is obviously true for the Atlas developed games like Persona, which shares a lot of the same themes and tropes, most obviously and particularly the recycled, yet somehow always awesome, high school setting where the ordinary kids unite to save the world in the most spectacular sci-fi ways possible. But vanilla work games are anything but vanilla. Not to say that Atlas games are either. And 13 Sentinels at its core is not an elaborate sci-fi mystery. It's just a love story. One with giant robots, time paradoxes, and a talking cat. Love is the main motivating factor for all on this journey. Love is often irrational. Love throws all plans astray. It's a cheap, naive impulse that creates the drama while also serving as its best conflict resolution. Love shows us that if at first we don't succeed, we can try again. We may be doomed to fail each and every time, but we haven't got much else to lose if we don't play the game. It's here that I think 13 Sentinels is a better game narrative than Nier Automata, a game with virtually the same plot developments and themes. The problem with Nier Automata is that the androids are too stiff, the tone of the game and its messaging either too aloof or too self-referential through the name-dropping of philosophers. The so-called philosophy is thought-provoking, but at times it seems a little pretentious the way it's presented. But 13 Sentinels feels a bit more pure, as it's very upfront with its themes while also maintaining subtext even when it decides to be saccharine as anime always does. And through this dynamic, it balances humor and melodrama with the romance and horror so well. Both games deal with cycles of birth and death, with love lost in the middle of it all. They have plots that verge on lunacy while also coming close to the meaning of life, which I think is just to take care of each other. Where games like 13 Sentinels and Persona 5 abstain from veering off into the contrived and self-important territory, is in how they use subversion around each and every corner. 13 Sentinels is a game that features a plotline where you find out that your high school crush, an innocuous appearing teen boy, is secretly a shape-shifting grizzled mass murderer from the future. It starts with the standard obligatory Japanese high school anime minutia in order to set the tone for the banality before the world ends in dramatic fashion. It's been done before, but how it ties events and themes together here, while balancing tonal shifts, is truly novel. It's a story that simultaneously reminds us that Armageddon is any day now. The game even stops on our current timeline in 2025 to show us what can happen. And also to never forget to stop, smell the roses, and bow down to the power of the Yakisoba Pond. Whenever the game gets close to being too frivolous, it reels us back in with expertly crafted tragic comedy, with moments of reflection and time to pause and hypothesize what will happen next. 
It knows how to thrill us and how to teach us. We are told that humans are constantly evolving. As time goes on, we are never the same as our past selves, not even in our memories of ourselves. It's brilliant points like this that not only offer pointed self-reflection along with momentary intrigue, but the true justification for the reason for the narrative being structured the way it is. With twists and turns and shock value developed out of the personal point of reference to where you stand in a character's shoes at a particular time in the story. One minute, Chihiro is a kawaii little sister that you just want to protect from strangers and scary hunks of metal. And the next minute, she's a pinup model anime waifu with balloon sized jugs that even the writers can't help but draw attention to in the dialogue. They knew exactly what they were doing and designing Chihiro. There's at least one mature character you can offer to cosplayers and hentai enthusiasts guilt-free. The same theme and plot is present in Nier with the whole 2B and 9S dynamic, both trapped in a time loop, which 13 Sentinels takes to the extreme for full effect. But I just appreciate the honesty so much more and Sentinels about how love really is the overriding and unambiguous reason for everything. We are responsible for living our futures here and now. But how that future plays out depends on who we spend it with. But it's not just a romantic game in the literal terms, but just in the way that every character is so steadfast in their goals and unfettered in achieving them. I was so heavily invested in the subplot of the young cadet from 1945. On the eve of Japan's unconditional surrender and his unwavering support for his country in the wake of complete annihilation of his hometown. The horror is so visceral and the feelings are so believable here. When he takes a Tory gate to the future in what is a sublime sequence of time travel, only to find out from a history book written 40 years later that his country has lost the war, he is at first incredulous and henceforth more determined than ever to keep fighting. He reminds me of the legendary Japanese holdouts that miraculously continued waging war on make-believe battlefields in a war that they mistakenly believed never ended. He fights not only for national pride, but for the little kid's sister that he left behind in his small hometown. That's romantic. Or the girly girl that runs off with a complete stranger in the night, with neon city lights delicately illuminating their uncertain passion ahead. She loves him even without knowing his name, even knowing he's sent from the future to assassinate her. It's anime bullshit. It's anime beauty. And maybe my favorite storyline, the one with Natsuno Minami, the half-UFO conspiracy theorist, half-athlete, that has her wish come true when she encounters an alien creature and takes him on the exalted journey to find his home. She sees him as an alien, not because she is naive about robots, but because she chooses to affirm her suspicions, her passions. Sentinels takes a twisting story about time travel and uses it as a metaphor for the different seasons in people's lives and the contrasting cultural shifts that we experience through the ages. It uses this plot device to consider the more realistic sci-fi scenario of life in a simulation or a world where automation replaces humans completely. Whether time is on our side or not, History repeats no matter what we think we're doing. Thirteen Sentinels reminds us of how contradictory we are, how little control we have in the choices we make, yet how much impact one personal decision can have on everything. Connecting the flow chart of events makes sense logically, but nothing else does, which is the nature of love usually. It's a story so confusing that spoilers don't matter much because after all is said and done, it's about as fuzzy as one of the character's memories after a wipe but the feeling that we have is the same. Despite the lack of conventional gameplay as well as an overabundance of techno jargon that ends up being contradictory, downright confusing, redundant, and it somewhat hurts the otherwise fabulous pacing, 13 Sentinels is as absorbing, intelligent, and heartfelt as most video game narratives experienced. It is perhaps a cliche to say that 13 Sentinels is one of those games that you don't play as much as you experience. But well, that's how you swallow this crazy pill. Letting the 2D colors wash over you and the peripheral pleasure of the music arrange the mood for all the various roller coaster feelings is an artful way to design anything. 
and giving the player the freedom to play at their own pace gives us at least the illusion of choosing our own adventure. I'd like to just sit back and let the soundtrack play as I soak in the environment. Whether it's the peaceful harmonic tunes and the liberating sight of a sunlight-filled classroom just after a boring school lecture has ended, or the haunting low-frequency droning sounds made during a disturbing revelation. It's cool how every story chapter is segmented and can be returned to at will. It's not the most replayable games in terms of options available to you, but it is one that is worth replaying again to truly see how well put together the narrative is reflexively once all is revealed. Video games are about interaction, and if nothing else, I love to see the characters interact with each other as we help them find the answers they're looking for by internalizing their inner thought bubbles and disregarding anything we deem unnecessary to the cause. Whether it's a traditional anime or a slightly player-initiated story, whether 2D or 3D, stories like these are rich and detailed, and I love to see what goes on in the background as much as what I can control being front and center. The chances are, if you haven't played 13 Sentinels, you haven't played a game quite like it. And if you like great storytelling, then I think the time for you to give 13 Sentinels a chance is only a matter of time. Oh, <laughs> 